Hi, good morning, everyone. So it's a pleasure to have uh, Jackie Kumar with us. So Jackie, uh, a very short intro to his uh, career. So he did his PhD from uh, GIFR uh, with, with Ponorans and Tuchai. And then he did his first postdoc uh, at the University of Montreal. Then he moved to TUM in Munich. And right now he's a postdoc in Los Alamos. And uh, he is an expert in paper physics and he has been working on effective field theories, various aspects of it in the last many years. So today he'll be giving a, giving a colloquial a colloquium on uh, exploration of physics at different scales. So to you, Jackie. Thank you very much for the introduction. So, uh, so I will be talking about uh, uh, so actually in particle physics, uh, uh, we study various phenomena and often they involve uh, different kinds of scales and, uh, and often they are quite very separate from each other. So uh, in those kind of situations, uh, uh, so-called effective field theories uh, are very useful tools uh, to describe those kind of phenomena. Uh, so in general, uh, effective field theories have uh, played a very uh, important role in the development uh, of the particle physics. And uh, we, hope, we hope that in, in future, they also, uh, I mean, I would argue that in fact, uh, that uh, they play an important role in the development of the particle physics in the future. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, after talking about, uh, initially about the uh, in general, uh, the different scales present in the nature, uh, I, will, I will talk about standard model of particle physics uh, and its limitations. And then we will talk about the uh, uh, recent uh, news from the LSC. So, meaning uh, uh, I will just uh, give you an update of uh, recent results from the larger provider and uh, give some interpretations there. And then we will see that uh, how in current situations the EFT can play a very important role uh, to study the physics. So, also there is a, there's a uh, uh, often there is a uh, question about. Uh, uh, how to use the pro properly use the effective theories because uh, you will see that uh, these PFTs have many many parameters. Okay, so they generally, if you uh, consider them in complete general, I think the predictability is, is uh, totally lost of these theories. So we will see that how what is the proper way to use these PFTs uh, uh, in the context of uh, mainly the particle physics. Okay. PFTs have been applied to various other things as well, but we will mainly focus on the uh, particle physics. Okay, so uh, so as I mentioned uh, in particle physics, we uh, often deal with the processes or phenomena which involve different scale. Okay, so uh, you can talk about scale in terms of distance or, or in, in energy, and they are related by uh, um, by this relation. Uh, basically, they are inversely proportional to each other. Which one? S -T. S -T. In the corner, okay. yeah. yeah. So, when we will talk about the scale, so we can use either uh, distance units or energy. Okay. In particle physics, we usually talk about uh, scale in terms of energy, but you can also talk about in terms of distance, and uh, they are related. Uh, so, it's useful to keep in mind that. Uh, uh, this particular unit, the 1G, which is 10 to the 9 meter per volt, is roughly equal to 10 to the 9 meter per volt. Uh, this is we should keep this number in mind when we talk about uh, when we talk about different energy scales uh, in this in this talk. So uh, here you can see uh, in nature we have different kind of scales. You know, we have for for instance human size is of uh, several feet or. Uh, equal to two meters. Then we have a uh, uh, large solar objects like uh, Earth side, uh, Earth radius, uh, Sun radius, uh, various cosmological objects which are bigger in size. And then we also have other scales like uh, 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 size of bacteria, size of atom, and then we have black scale, which is uh, very, very small. So you can see that uh, uh, different scales in the nature they span Orders at all orders of magnitude. So, black scale is 10 to the 25 meter, and uh, cosmological scale is, you know, it goes all the way up to uh, many, many positive powers of 10 to the 26 power. 
So uh, I will refer these short scales, uh, you know, as uh, ultraviolet uh, scales, okay? uh, and uh, this last scale is the infrared scale. So October we will be talking about the uh, physics at uh, short distance physics, uh, meaning uh, at short distances at high energies, uh, in ultraviolet physics and then infrared physics. Uh, so one interesting fact is that uh, the physics at uh, at every scale we have some interesting phenomena. We have some interesting physics, and uh, the description of physics at the different scale, uh, the 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 physics description is not the same. So at different scales we might need some kind of a different uh, laws of nature or different uh, uh, theories to explain uh, explain the phenomena at different scales. For instance, this is a very simple example of classical versus quantum mechanics. So you can use classical mechanics in ordinary day-to-day -day life, uh, which is perfectly fine. Uh, so, but uh, so we can describe the objects of the order of meter. But when you go to quantum regime, uh, very when you take very small objects like atom, uh, then you have to uh, consider the quantum effect. Okay. So very simple phenomena occur at the quantum mechanics of scale. Uh, as compared to uh, the classical scale. Okay, this, this is one example. So similarly, at a different scales, you have, uh, uh, you can see uh, different physics features and uh, different, uh, different kind of things uh, from the point to explain things at a different scale. So already you see some kind of uh, uh, effectiveness here. So effectively, you can use uh, classical mechanics uh, to decide objects uh, which are of some kind of meter. So, this is kind of effective theory at, at those things. Okay. Already you see uh, the very big definition of effective theory. We will make it more precise in the coming slides. So in particle physics, what we are doing, okay? In general, we want to describe uh, physics at very, very short distance scale, okay? which is uh, of the order of uh, 10 to the next So that's the one of the goals to uh, of particle physics to describe physics at very, very short distance scales. And uh, how we do that, uh, we study uh, different processes of, uh, of the particle, uh, their interruptions, and through that, we try to get information about very short distance scales. So, this is the practice that we uh, use for in particle physics. For instance, we often look for new particles, heavy particles, okay, the mass is very, very heavy, means that they can go very, very short distance scales. Uh, so this is the uh, uh, one question uh, in particle physics. The fundamental question uh, is that uh, what is universe made up of? So we have been asking this question for long times, and this has uh, led to uh, many many uh, achievements. Uh, uh, you know, understanding the universe uh, as well as scientific achievements. Uh, you know, new development of new technologies. Even if uh, uh, original born is not. Uh, uh, was not to develop these technologies or or, 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 or others. Several times you know you discover new things like the WWW uh, web is discovered at a particle physics lab. So, but that was not the main goal. So the main goal was to answer the fundamental question: what is made about and how this particle is acting. So these are so often we see some byproducts um, uh, from particle physics. So uh, at some point we thought that atom is a fundamental, but then uh, with, uh, with uh, our more and more understanding, we, we found that there's a nucleus inside the atom. Then this is further made up of uh, protons, which are called nucleons, protons, and neutrons. And then further we found that they are made up of quarks. So the, what what is fundamental keeps changing with time. Okay? So uh, today's uh, fundamental may not be fundamental particle tomorrow because of the understanding keeps on changing and uh, we are growing smaller and smaller scales. So um, so we, we are finding more and more uh, fundamental particles. Uh, so apart, apart from, uh, from asking these questions, uh, uh, like what is universe made of, uh, what is the, uh, how these particles interact with each other. So we are also after uh, finding a theoretical framework, a single theoretical framework, which can describe the physics at different scales, okay, at very short distance scales. That is also uh, one of the goals of particle physics. 
So right now, so uh, as I said, we are after finding a, a theoretical framework. So right now, we do have a theoretical framework it's called uh, standard model of particle physics, uh, and uh, this can describe uh, three out of the four uh, fundamental forces in the nature, which is strong interaction, weak interaction, and uh, electromagnetic interaction. Gravitational interaction is not part of this uh, yet. Uh, so standard model is basically against uh, a quantum field theory. Uh, on the principle of phase invariance and spontaneous meter breaking. Uh, so this here you see is the particle content of the standard model. So we have a uh, different type of particles in the standard model. Uh, some of them are called quarks, uh, which are six of them. Then we have lepton, also six of them. Then we have other kind of particles uh, which are called force carriers. Uh, we have four of them, then we have three. Of them. So this this together uh, is the particle content of the standard model. And uh, by now, all, all these particles have been discovered. Uh, as you might have heard, this last uh, Higgs boson is the last particle that we discovered in 2012. Uh, so by now, the particle content of standard model is complete. And uh, standard model is also working very far, perfectly fine. It is able to explain many, many measurements uh, taken by many, many experiments uh, conducted at different scales in different parts of the world. So this is a very successful study that, uh, that we have right now. But at the same time, uh, uh, this cannot be completely related to that. We already see that uh, uh, gravitation is not part of standard model. So already we see that uh, we need something uh, beyond the standard model. Okay. So we will not go uh, into technical detail, but this is how the standard model the Lagrange looks like. Uh, so it can describe uh, uh, different type of interaction between different type of, uh, particles mathematically. So uh, standard model is incomplete, as we as, uh, just uh, as I just said. Uh, it has uh, various reasons uh, uh, why we think that is incomplete. So we will discuss that in the coming few slides. So now let us look at a little bit more closely at the masses of these particles. Uh, then we just just draw the standard model particles. So uh, they are very small to see here, but uh, but uh, the masses of these particles, you know, they span uh, a, a orders of magnitude. So, for instance, uh, U quark is uh, of the order of and top quark is uh, uh, about uh, 200 uh, GeV. So, already this is five order of uh, magnitude difference. So, you see, if there's another, in the first slide, we saw that there's a different kind of hierarchy, so the scales. We see another hierarchy within the standard model uh, particle uh, of the masses. So, here you can see that when we study particle physics phenomena, which will involve these particles. So, meaning the these phenomena will involve different scale because these particles are different different masses. So this is the first thing that I said in the beginning that uh, uh, when you have a multiple scales in your in your uh, in your observable or experimental quantity, then effectively are uh, uh, very useful tools to to handle these kind of uh, quantities. So, uh, so here I will be using two benchmark scales uh, uh, in the, for the future slides. So I will call the low energy as the QGV scale, plus the QGV, and uh, 100 GV I will refer as the electric scale. So these are two uh, very important benchmarks that we will use uh, again in the future of the slides. So apart from that, uh, there are other puzzles that uh, standard model cannot uh, uh, explain, for instance, uh, uh, one of them is matter or matter antimatter asymmetry. So in the universe, you know there is more matter as compared to antimatter, and uh, uh, so this this asymmetry standard model is unable to explain asymmetry. Okay? And on top of that, we have other puzzles like the, okay, dark matter in the universe, uh, and standard model has no candidate. It has no particle for the uh, dark matter. So similarly, we saw that there are six quarks. Okay, so six atoms. So these six quarks of the uh, quarks are also called as flavors of the quarks. Okay, each quark has a strong flavor. And uh, so in particular physics, we have phenomena in which uh, different quarks uh, go from one, one quark to another quarks. We have transitions uh, between the different quarks. And these are called flavor transitions. So uh, standard model cannot uh, uh, describe these, uh, these transitions in a fundamental way. Although we have some descriptions in the standard model based on some experimental input, but uh, it doesn't fully explain the places now. Um, 
uh, cutting between the blocks. So similarly, it's for, uh, for the atoms. So then we have other puzzles like the neutrinos. So neutrinos are massive particles in the primary proven, but standard model uh, is massive field. So due to all these reasons, we, we think that uh, uh, there should be something beyond the standard model. Uh, so that's what uh, is the main goal of, of uh, particle physics in nowadays. So, uh, so to cure this problem of standard model, we often propose new theory, and these new theories uh, have new particles. Okay, often they have new particles, and to confirm these theories. Uh, even though they can very well explain uh, the, the, the they can cure the problem of standard model. To to uh, confirm these theories, we have to find at least this particle that is experimental. Uh, so often uh, we are looking for uh, beyond standard model particles uh, at various experiments, which are proposed by uh, new theories, which cure the problems of one or other problem of standard model. Okay. I think all curing because standard model is already at Right. The standard model is already a specific to know that it is not a complete Yeah, so what I mean here uh, doing is that uh, basically to, to fix this problem, to I mean, accommodate these problems. But these are not problems, they are right? These are not problems. So this is not a problem of standard model, but this is our problem. We, we want to explain this process. We want to have some, as I said in the beginning, we want to have some theories of the world which explains the physics at short distance. We want that everything should be explained. So, uh, yeah, standard model, if you take pieces of the technique theory, is very successful. It's explained to, able to explain a lot of data in some all experiment. Everything is fine. If you just stick with standard model, that, that is fine. It's not fine. So, what's the experimental status of this? You know, uh, there have been many theories around. Uh, people have spent their lives constructing these theories, working them. Uh, so, what's the experimental status? So, as I said, these theories predict new particles. Uh, you have to find these particles as experiment to confirm these theories. And uh, nothing has been seen yet uh, in the experiment. So, large hadron collider is uh, uh, exploring uh, various searches in which uh, uh, different particles can be seen, but uh, nothing has been seen uh, until now. So this is uh, this plot uh, basically uh, gives you a uh, uh, status of uh, this LSE surface. Uh, we don't have to go in, into the details, but uh, you can see that. Uh, so when it uh, when when LSE is unable to see a particle, uh, then we basically get the uh, bound on the reduced mass of particle, lower bound on the mass of the particle. So basically, what you see here is the lower bound on the mass of the particle. So here is the electronic scale. Uh, which is and uh, it has uh, searched up to further up to 10 TV. So between that, we haven't found any particle. Okay. So on the one hand, this is very depressing because uh, uh, five years ago, or maybe uh, 10 years ago, we were thinking that uh, we will suddenly see some particles, uh, and I was doing my PhD that we will see certainly particles, like super particles, something, uh, but uh, we haven't seen yet uh, anything. So how to, so now the question is how to interpret this situation and how to proceed with the point. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this is the lower bound on the mass of this exotic particle, two particles. These are different particles. So there's a long list. We don't have to go into it today, but nothing can be seen. All kind of particles are these are. So uh, the lower bound of the particle uh, mass is in five and five. Different colors are different. Different particles. Different yeah. And this is the uh, different mass. So I is going to be So right now, currently, it's, uh, uh, LSE is at the second second degree. So I I don't think so. It can go much further than second degree. So this is I think the uh, limit here. Already at the limit. So. People are talking about uh, 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 colliders. But Jackie, there would always be indirect probes to much higher scales. Yes. We have seen it there. Even though it ran in like 250 or GV, it would go up to several TVs to indirect. For sure, for sure. That will be the our point of ESP. So I will be talking about that. So these are the this is the status of direct circuit. So there are a 
other searches, we can search uh, to, to other probes who will talk about that. So uh, I should also warn you that this situation that I'm uh, showing here uh, may not be that, you know, when you interpret these limits for LSC results, there are always some assumptions. So uh, it, it's possible that the uh, new six particles are hiding somewhere, you know, uh, and we're not able to see them through uh, our assumptions. But uh, this is roughly the picture that we're getting from, from all kinds of stuff. If you take this as a case value, then, uh, then, uh, uh, then I will talk about that the uh, uh, next coming slide that the effectiveness is a uh, uh, very good way to proceed. Can you give me an example of the Can you give me an example of For instance, you know, uh, so how do you calculate so this? How do you calculate the bound of this particle? So, so LMP usually look for certain processes, you know, let's say A is equal to C. A is equal to C. Okay? So then you theoretically calculate this uh, process. And compare it with experiment. Okay. So now this uh, process, so when you in, in a theoretical session, there are some parameters inside it. So these assumptions are, are about these parameters. So often these limits are given for some values for these parameters, uh, for some parameters. So like this would be the updates of the, the radius interactions, which is very much. Yeah, often these are assumptions about the couplings. Uh, Yes, yes, people do that often. You can reinterpret this called reinterpretation. And different uh, people uh, reinterpret that. So somebody can say that, oh, you can take me, you know, if, this, if you change the assumptions of the bounds and put below, I will take it one degree. So you say, this happens all the time. But uh, you you see that after this, a lot of searches, so this is the overall pictures that I am doing here. So, you know, the, in this, for the di different interpretations of these bounds for different particles, uh, there are different assumptions. But this is the overall picture that we're getting. It can change, yeah. As I said. Yeah, so we haven't seen any uh, any new particles, okay, yet. So let us interpret this situation, okay? And uh, from this, we, we will try to draw some to uh, try to find our way for the future. So this, uh, I mentioned that uh, I will be calling known at least as uh, or, or QGB. And then, right now, it's just the highest uh, energy is uh, LSE, but in future, they could be. Yeah, so it, uh, in fact, uh, this, uh, this was on uh, the admin side uh, and the previous uh, electron photon collider lab, at lab, but it was, it was not found there. So that gave some uh, very strict bounds on this mass. So I think, uh, as far as I remember, it was just on the verge. So uh, its mass is around 125 GV, and that could flow up to 90 GV or something. So it could, it oh, was not. On the 14 already has come in, so yeah. So it could go up to uh, 115. Yeah, it was uh, almost a the word. The boundary is different to this slightly more than 114 G. That should be clear. It depends the two signals to the 114. 114, but that is not. I think we have to expand the left round because so, so that we have to the LSP for this decided. It is not the same round starting. So if it was 114, they had a shot. Okay. But it's not allowed to be 10 GB more, so they would not have seen. The other thing to mention is Severton. Severton also almost had it. But they would have taken a long time with GB bus and it's But now searching for DB one later on after the next was discovered in AC, they found an excess in the data. So they would have taken a long time to confuse it. Yeah. Moreover, I mean, now we have found it. Uh, so now we want to study its properties. So it's coupling, its interactions. You know, so let's see if uh, now. With LSC, we can be sure that there's no bad activity in the Not sure. That's what, uh, that's what I, I think explained uh, previously. We are not sure. Okay. So this is the roughly the picture that we are getting from LSC. Perhaps there are some particles that want to be, be, might be hiding due to our assumptions. Okay. We might see them tomorrow. By better techniques, but uh, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, Shelfa mentioned once, you know, that's a way of writing make the coupling easy. So in the limit of zero coupling, it's not possible. Right? It can always be written. What is stated one GV if it doesn't couple it. That spirit you know, you know the company is also there's a limitation of like person power in DC experiment. So they can do like a certain number of searches in using various models. So like for every model, every particle has some final states which they are being for. So of course, everything is not exhausted. So it's possible that like something got missed as well. So of course, we cannot be certain that there, there is nothing below 20. But uh, that's the rough picture. As that's the rough picture. And this is a, uh, yeah. Maybe you should mention another example of floating the mass gap, right? When the space moves, the particles will come to them, like in two person. Yeah, like uh, the complex scenarios. You can mention that in an example. Yeah. yeah, I have heard about, yeah. So when, you mean when the- uh, Yeah, so two, if you take the like Duino, for instance, you cannot change around the company because it is from company, right? So, but if uh, the Duino has to decay the company in two percent, but if whatever it decays to the daughter part, it will become very close in mass to the two, then the rate will fall because there's no decay. And the limit of this becoming degenerate will set off the future. And then you can make this kind of a thing. You will be allowed to. So fairly uh, light bulb. And another way. So having light So basically it's the rate. So they have yeah, like rate. smaller rate. It could be due to different reasons. You know, small couplings or degenerate passes. Degenerate passes as you mentioned. Or something else. Or detector. Or detector is not uh, able to see for some reason. Mentioning that even if you are not running the machine into that, that's an example. We'll talk about that. Uh, my talk is basically about that. I think the directory you won't be able to see is there. And if you use this method, can you see the signature of this person from the order you want? You can see it in directly. You can see it. So he will discuss, I think. So I will discuss yeah. again. So I am not spoiling it. Yes. Okay, so how to interpret the current situation? Okay, so we have this known of these scale uh, about two GV and electron scale two hundred GV. And then uh, until of two like of two T V we haven't seen anything. Okay? So it looks like that. There's another gap between electron scale and, and uh, the scale of the where we are expecting the particle. So, like we had scale gap between the two GV and electron scale, there are no particle in between that. So, similarly, it looks like uh, if we take the Z scientific value, there is a, another scale gap. Okay. So, now that's a very ideal condition for building effective. So, whenever you have scale gap, so you can you can uh, build effective things. So you will see that there yeah, in the coming slides. Okay. So now we come to this point: uh, direct work versus indirect work. Okay. So the one way to look for the nucleus or new particles is direct searching, in which you directly produce the particle and directly see them in the detector. Okay. That's one way. So in those cases, you need a very high energy. You know, if you want to. Uh, find a 100D particle, you need a, at least 100D energy, right? So, but uh, our energy uh, is limited, the collider energy is limited, very expensive experiments. So, that, that thing is a limited. Uh, this is a direct, direct way of producing the particle, right? like I talked about uh, the LSC subject. So, another method is to uh, look for these particles indirectly. So, here you don't produce this particle. But you see the effects in some observable. So when you so what you do, you measure some of the observable and see if uh, there is a departure from the standard model. So if there is a departure from the standard model, we can say that it's not standard by standard model, it's standard by something else, some new particle. Okay. So this is called indirect uh, view of uh, looking at the particle. So here we basically we have to measure uh, many many multitude of observables uh, very precisely. See if there is a difference with respect to 
But ultimately, uh, in my view, even if you see a departure from time of order, ultimately you have to rectify that part, right? So, but 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 you can feel that you can sense them uh, the presence to these departures. So that could be like first signal of uh, new particles. Then ultimately you have to find them uh, directly, you know, you have to build them. But uh, the the thing is that if you see such a departure, you know, in the, let's say you see a departure of 100 degrees, that will really give you a motivation to build the uh, high energy colliders, right? So in the, right now you are just saying that uh, uh, LS is running at 30 TV, let's build a uh, more bigger collider at the uh, more energy. But what, what more energy? 100 TV, 200 TV, 1000 TV. But if you see some evidence, you know, you will know that there's something at uh, this scale. So you should look around that. So here in the drug searches, basically, this collider experiment is there for you. Might be called, you know, uh, you can just use the particle humanity. If you have more momentum, you can go short and short. Um, this is just uh, this. Uh, but in this case, uh, basically, we are using assignment principle. So here we don't produce the particle, but we but we see uh, we see them through quantum quantum computations. So you can think of uh, in terms of assignment principle, like the uh, energy. So if there is a heavy particle, you cannot directly produce it, but uh, it can while through the uncertainty principle, log the energy is violated for a short amount of time. And uh, you see uh, it, it has a virtual part, okay? and you will see it's exact on some of the people, but not we, we have not produced it, but we see through the point of the So here you can prove there's no limit here, right? There's no limit on energy. So depending on how the level, some of the levels are sensitive to very, very high scale, like 20, 1000 p, and uh, uh, so there's no limit uh, uh, as far as energy is concerned. So you only have to look for Better and better of the rivers you can go higher speeds. So, the light flow is able to control the lifespan of the particle. So, you just give the particle to the lifespan of the particle. Yeah. So, it depends on the processes. You know, we will do, we can find processes uh, or, or decay reactions uh, which can which can from. But let's say if you have a very heavy particle, that's how much that means that it's very sensitive. So that means you have a very small. Very small. Yeah, I agree. I mean, not uh, all the uh, all the transmissions can go, uh, you know, larger scale, but it, it will depend on. On the other level that you're looking at, but also many other factors apart from the mass. You know, there are many, many other factors. But usually, there is some exception for sections, like for example, you know, carbon period because it doesn't break that break down at some speed. From that, indirectly, we can measure the mass, right? But we can guess the masses, we can uh, get some feeling about the uh, where they should. And let's say that through indirect processes, it, they will give you some estimate where you should look for it. That, that's what happens. Just one more comment. So, you have some interaction, let's say it has charge. The charge and the long distance, then the LFC can see. So, there will be a track that is still showing a building. That would be easy. It's not cutting the LFC. It's not going to be just stable. Long distance particle will be limited by the collider. But it will be up to a few. But your question on the 100 TV, yeah, 100 TV yeah. scale, but then it has to be in there. 100 TV scale, in fact, we won't be seen that in the 100 TV yeah. so, uh, But, uh, yeah, so I guess your point is only in there. It is an unstable particle, I think, then you have it in there, and it's down with a small energy. That means everything that they have is more and more energy, as they have to say. But then you get the mass is then the size of the size of the size of the size of the size yeah, it's related to the weight, yes. So, it's the same question as the weight. So, this is a second route that we will uh, follow for the effective field theory. Okay, we will not directly produce the particles. We will use effective field theories to calculate some observables. And uh, departures from them will signal uh, these new particles. Okay, so, I think 
So tomorrow's talk will be more about the second stuff that we'll be giving out. Put it on the second donors, but uh, uh, tomorrow we'll see more in more detail. Indirect. That was indirect. Because it's, it's partially open. So it has been uh, uh, part of the you know business. So there has been a nominee to pass the uh, income and growth. So, but we hope that something could survive, right? Because we know that kind of audit is complete. We want to stand with things. So we, we believe that something we will see some of them. That's our hope. So now we turn to uh, effective theory. So before going to effective theory, I will mean, just give you a little bit more examples uh, uh, about the effective theories. So we, we already talked about the doctor, uh, mechanics that uh, you can describe the physics of ordinary jet to classical mechanics. And you can uh, you can ignore, uh, for instance, if you are driving a car, so you can ignore the realistic uh, effects, right, in day to day life. So you can kind of effectively use classical uh, classical mechanics. Okay, it's kind of effective theory. So similarly, if you are building a house, you don't have to worry about quantum mechanics, right? You don't have to worry about uncertainty principle or or all of that stuff. So this so the, the idea of effective theory, as you see, is very old. You know, it's not a uh, it's not uh, uh, um, it's not something new, but tomorrow's talk I will talk uh, I will talk about what are the new developments in the effective theory. So that will be part of tomorrow's talk. Uh, so let us make it a little bit more precise. Uh, so in effective theory, you can compute some some quantities, measurable quantities, uh, in the form of this expansion. So it's, so this. You can think of this as an experimental quantity that can be measured. This is an expansion in this parameter x, and x is the ratio of these two scales. So whenever you have scale separation, uh, then you can have x, you can define x, okay, ratio of these two scales, and this parameter is less than one. So now your experimental quantity is just uh, a series in x, and uh, depending upon your experimental precision, you can keep the terms that you want, okay. So say that you are uh, x is point one, okay? You uh, some specific value. Okay? So you will have this expansion. So the value of this observable will be like this, the theoretical uh, prediction. And then you can see if you want to carry this term, uh, second term or not. You know, this term is uh, much smaller than this, uh, this term. So depending on your experimental precision, you can keep your, you can keep the, Whatever uh, the terms, whatever only one. So EFT, you can say, is a systematic expansion uh, in terms of uh, some parameter. And uh, depending on your experimental position, you you can you can increase your position with uh, this expansion. So this is not yet precise. Okay, so we will now step by step. We will make it more precise. So that's a very rough definition of our. This. So effective field theory is a field theory. Okay? There's nothing field here. So in the coming slides, we will make it more, more precise. So very, very rough definition. Okay, so as I said, we can imagine two scales, one is heavy scale lambda, and uh, then is a uh, small scale, uh, smaller scale P. So in EFT, you can compute some of the uh, systematic expansion in terms of ratio of these scales. So when you are neglecting some uh, higher order terms, means uh, uh, that's what, what I mean by ignorance. So depending on your experimental position, you can ignore some effects which are not relevant. Okay, that's why it's effective. So you don't have to compute everything, right? Because uh, you, at present time, let's say you can measure uh, some of the with a given, given position. So I don't need to measure it uh, uh, by position, which is a uh, hundred times better than that. So I will compute only uh, the things which uh, which, can, which are relevant given the experimental situation. So uh, Effective theory is also a quantum field theory. So today's talk, uh, tomorrow's talk will be more about it. 
So it has to follow follow the principles of quantum uh, quantum physics, like renormalization, etc. So so it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a scientific thing. So if we look at the EFT Lagrangian, it looks basically a series uh, uh, in the powers. So different powers are suppressed by by, by the scale. So depending upon as I said our position, you can you can do, you can keep the term that you want in the in the Lagrangian. So this is what we mean uh, we, uh, what we call as power counting. So you, power counting basically means uh, keep track of powers of lambda. Okay? So you can keep the track of powers of lambda and keep only the powers which matter for your uh, with a given expanding position. So for instance, uh, you can you can calculate something. Uh, you can truncate the series here and calculate you know, in terms of the you know, first first two terms and uh, then compare your observations uh, with that side. But if required, you can add more other terms and uh, so in this way you can increase your uh, so by truncating this uh, series, you know, at, at some level, uh, it uh, brings a huge uh, simplification in the calculation. Okay, so uh, as I said, the refractive field theories are not new. Okay? Already in 1933, there was a theory uh, which was used to study uh, low energy processes like beta decay. So here, you know, the idea is that basically, so let's say you have some process in which uh, initially you have some quarks and finally you have some quarks. And mediated by a double boson. So here, double boson is a heavy particle. Uh, uh, I would, you can call it an ultraviolet scale in this process. And then you have light particles which are uh, masses of these quarks. Uh, so that's the uh, infrared scale in this process. So you see that this process involves a different scale with different mass particles. So uh, for me, basically, Wrote this effective interaction where there was no uh, W was no, was no part of it. It's just the uh, uh, external quarks. Using the external quarks, you can just uh, write the uh, write the uh, effective interaction and uh, and uh, do the physics in that. So uh, we saw that effective field theory also also always has some expansion. So in this case, expansion looks like this. So it's expansion in the powers uh, the ratio of K over M W. So here. The first of term is just one over one over one over square, and then you have more terms, uh, which are suppressed by powers of double uh, mass. So this first term uh, is represented by one. Okay. So this is basically for forming uh, effective interaction that uh, you can just uh, uh, use it to describe uh, low energy processes. Here the W, uh, where the W goes on. Uh, you can you can treat it like uh, an expansion. Okay, so this Fermi theory, uh, so the general, uh, more general version of Fermi theory is called deep effective theory. theory. So here we have written just uh, one operator, you know, side by side by uh, side, in terms of quarks, but you can, you can construct all sort of operators using electrons, quarks, or combination of them. So this in general is called deep effective theory. And uh, uh, this theory has been very, played a very important role the of uh, so, some of the notable achievements of a weak effective theory are uh, we could predict the uh, masses of some quarks before their discovery. So, we could, uh, we could for instance, uh, 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 we, could, we could calculate the, uh, we could uh, estimate the top quark mass and uh, using the inverse measurements. And uh, we already knew that top quark has to be less. So before its discovery. So this was much later, uh, before in 1989, uh, finally top quark was discovered in 1985. So so these are just two, but apart from that, many, many processes are uh, external kind of order has been completed using the effective theory in terms of the effective theory. And they have been then tested uh, at various standards. So this played a very, very important role. Uh, to test the uh, test the standard model. So similarly, you you know, so there in case of standard model, we have electric scale and then low energy scale. So since we are now in kind of similar situation, right? So we have some uh, now electric scale we can measure here, the lower scale, and then we have some weak scale, uh, which uh, is well motivated by uh analysis and so. So now in the similar fashion, we can construct some some kind of uh, uh, weak theory, some new version of weak effective theory, which is suitable for uh, probably.
Okay, so let's uh, let's do that now. So now the situation is like this. So we have some uh, very high scale of the order of T V. Uh, here, uh, here new particles, uh, um, uh, which is basically the lower bound of these new particles. Then we have electric scale and then this uh, order of one C V. So this part has been uh, very well developed. Uh, so here uh, it's a weak effective theory, some original version of Fermi theory. It's a weak effective theory which consists of four uh, main operator, operators. And in this regime, the symmetry of the theory is uh, CC and uh, U1. So QCD and uh, electromagnetic interaction, uh, that symmetry is unbroken. And the fields are basically like for electrons, uh, gluon, and, uh, and the photon. So using these fields and uh, expecting this symmetry, you can construct your all possible operators uh, in this region. So this has been very well developed, as I said, and has been already used to test the standard model. So now in this regime, uh, we want to construct now a theory for, for new physics. Uh, so there are some differences, very important differences that we uh, expect in this regime. So first of all, the symmetry uh, in this region is a full case symmetry in this kind of model. C C and C two band one. It is not a uh, partial one, and the fields uh, in this re regime also look different because here we were dealing with the physical particles like quarks or atoms, but here we have uh, you know uh, uh, the fields uh, which are which are unpacked fields like the doublets, quark doublets, or uh, electron doublets and things like that. So the operators are made up of uh, these these quantities, not not of the uh, physical fields. Of course, you can express them then in the different ways. Another important difference uh, as compared to weak effective theory is that we have active uh, Yukawa interaction. So in this in this regime, uh, the top quark is not there. The top quark is already uh, removed from the theories. Uh, but in this regime, top quark is there, and we also have additional Yukawa interaction. So this plays a very important role uh, in the dynamics of uh, the You will see tomorrow. We will have some examples. Where you see top what plays a very important role. Uh, yes. So that's a very very pressing question. You will see. So in the in the low energy theory, you know, first of all, top quark is not a dimensional thing in Pedro, it's an integrated out. But at the let's say we are working at the electric scale, okay, the powers are there. So there you can fix your powers from quark muscle and well and well. So now the question is when you are working here, how to fix uh, fix the powers? So that's a very important question, a very pressing question, and uh, it's, a, it's a tricky thing, it's very hard. So you can do this, for, for instance, you can do uh, you can uh, uh, get the quark muscles and uh, get the powers at the electric scale and then run run them. At. Okay, at the uh, higher. But then you need a underworld theory to do the RT dimension. No. So this, uh, so this, uh, uh, in this regime, we have standard which is a, a completely well defined theory. You can do RG is within the snapshot. So it's a normalizer. You can normalize it, and you can uh, you can do the RG is within. The but even then, this is a difficult. It's a, uh, it's very tricky to do uh, that. So always there are some assumptions. Uh, when you want to fix your powers in the intensity of the And you will see tomorrow that this will lead to uh, very setbacks in uh, the phenomenological levels. Okay, so we already see some very important differences uh, uh, for the theory that we are going to build for new physics as compared to the effective theory. Uh, and uh, so the, we have to deal with all these things uh, now, which are which are different from which different from uh, uh, perspective. And in this respect, a lot of developments uh, took place in last uh, last decade. Uh, for for instance, uh, calculating the uh, anomalous dimensions. Now I'm saying what did you do? Calculating anomalous dimensions. Uh, uh, here it was the QCD and QED, but now you also know what top work so it's not complicated. So the uh, the Lagrangian for the standard model EFT was already attempted in 1986 by uh, Buchholder and Weiler. They found 80 operators uh, 
combining all these fields uh, in various possible ways, extracting the full structure kind of model. They found great evidence. But later, this was a group found that uh, some of the operators were redundant. And now, this, this whole Lagrangian is known by the name of Warsaw uh, uh, basis. Um, so up to what we Sorry, up to what we said we are to find. So up to what? Dimension? Uh, dimension 6. Up to dimension 6. But we know by now also dimension 8. The basis is 20%. But this is a mess. This is a two many, many parameters. That dimension. So that's uh, also, uh, so in the beginning I mentioned, okay, so that will be my next point here. So given the large number of parameters, so there are already 59 uh, terms in the Lagrangian. If you know the flavor, flavor structure, once you put the flavor structure, there's 2499 terms. So these are 2499 terms in your Lagrangian. So the question is, what what can you do with those terms? How to use it properly? It's very uh, often this question is asked. So due to that, some people think that it's just a waste of time. You know, you cannot. There's no predictability, right? So you have so many parameters. There's no predictability at all. But we will see that still you can, uh, if you use it properly, you can still extract the information about it. Uh, so uh, already the assumption is weak effective field. So weak effective, so standard model EFT has 2499. Weak effective field theory has more than 2000. It has even more than uh, standard model EFT uh, parameters. But it was useful. It is already known that it was already used to test the standard model. It has been already used like this. Uh, yeah, that's just one of it. Yeah. But uh, at equal to eight, I think there are many more. I don't know uh, number. But there, uh, so this is where uh, you have to see how to properly use the statistical tool. You know? If you just try to uh, take the full Lagrangian and try to do something, uh, that's just uh, useless. So the voice of basis was the book full and while that's uh, it, it, in the terms of the linear combination. The linear combination of some operator there is written here and then the different operator. Yeah. The choice of the basis, you know, that suggests that it's a linear combination. Yeah, so it's like that. So some operator, like they wrote uh, Elva. Uh, so they wrote twice as this operator. Uh -huh. So Bookmuller wrote this operator. So tau a gamma mu l alpha tau a gamma mu l. So that was a uh, there in in their basis. So they also wrote this operator l bar gamma mu l without the tau is. So now, but you can use this just the fears and you can express this operator in terms of this operator. So this kind of thing uh, they found. So, but I think that this. Uh, so, that is redundant operator. Redundant. Not everything is independent. But also, is it written as a linear combination or is there a one to one correspondence? The non redundant ones, the ones that are uh, common to both, right? Yes. So, of course, things which you can pierce, those you remove. Yes, so that's, then, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what they did. Yeah. But also, is it done with a different linear combination? Or? Uh, Different linear combination means of the operators in the book model. No, so they just they just basically eliminated all the different pieces. That's the only that's the only thing. That's the only part. In fact, this is just a masterpiece. You know, this paper is a masterpiece, and uh, I think the original paper is this paper. They have they have done like the difference in removing all the redundant. Redundant. That's it. Because book model and binary are independent currently, they had already used equations of functions. They know they know new all the things. They tried to do it, but I think they somehow they skipped the something. Yeah, this is an important thing. But uh, now this is now very popular to use for some reason. Uh, there is another reason I think for some basis, Like I think if I am not wrong, SNEPT in for some basis is very well renormalized. However, SNEPT written in series basis, so there is this other basis. Where the renormalization is still not done properly. Yes. Probably it's doable, but like yes. one has done. Yes. Yeah, so yes. So there's another basis is called uh, CALJ. I think by just CALJ refers to the name of the people. Um, 
I don't know, there are some different reasons to construct these spaces, maybe it's suitable for some of the reasons in this sector. But uh, what services is very standard. Uh, so whatever you can do, see in some other basis, of course, you can also do the work. That's a minimum there. Um, yeah, so, okay, the important point is that uh, this is just a, the, the, just it was a master thesis. I think they saw the paper book the print on the few mistakes there. And then they, so by the way, this paper was written in 2010. Even in the 17, they updated the update was they found one of the old printed operators in the update. So this is ongoing. I think I think now it's uh, pretty stable. So this is a uh, uh, so now what we want to do, uh, like we like we built a, a deep effective filtering for the standard model. So we want to build some uh, another ENP, standard model ENP to study the okay. So this will simply play the same role as particularly might play the same role as particularly play for the for the standard model because the situation is very very similar. Okay, we are here again, and uh, uh, tomorrow we will see that uh, we will define it uh, more precisely. So we can also connect the next scales uh, using the combination of running. Uh, so the, the phenomena that we scale, you can connect them at scale. So that's also a very important part of the camera. And this connection, you know, has new features as well because of this uh, new interactions. So in this regime, we have new power interactions. Here we only had a QCD and the QD interactions. The power interactions have much more uh, complexity and uh, uh, richness in you know, the similar combination group running. To we'll see that more. So, okay, EFTs have been used for various other things like for the human physics stuff and uh, gravity. I'm not working on them, of course. So, but uh, but these are not only related to particle physics. This has been applied to various uh, other sectors. But we will just focus on uh, mainly on the BSM first part, little bit on the, I will talk a little bit on the other part, but mainly on the BSM physics. So, okay, so now the, we will wrap uh, just by asking this question, how to use it properly, okay? So these are the, all the operators. Uh, you don't have to read them properly. Uh, you don't have to go into details, but this is just uh, the list of all the 59 operators in the standard EFT. And uh, once you add the, add the flavor structure, you have 24, 19 times. Okay. Not just flavor, like, like this, from 24, 19, 59, we need like, Barrier number conservation and many other types of this. So, I am talking about only the uh, operators with barrier number conservation in the company delta B and delta B uh, L equal. So, if you had uh, those ones, uh, it's even more. So, okay, Sorry. so 2499 is without importing barrier number in the company. After, 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 as far as I just just out of my memory, I think it's after. Okay. So now the question is how to use this like how to extract some information, meaningful information uh, out of this. So you can ask the question, is the predictive power total lost? So it seems that like the predictive power is lost. Uh, yeah. So then the first argument is that the weak effective theory has 20 effects, 31 number of parameters. It has even more parameters, okay? And it's well known that it has helped a lot development of standard models and testing the standard models. In fact, uh, uh, all the flavor sector standard models was tested using this. So this has been nicely summarized in the very good five. So all the tests of standard models, all the processes uh, were calculated and uh, this, is, this is a long review. You can, you can read it. It's very interesting uh, uh, document. So how to use it properly, okay? So there are possible two routes, okay? Uh, yeah. So possible two routes are there. Uh, is one is top down, so we start for top down approach, and then this is a bottom up approach, okay? So in the top down approach, uh, so I, I said in the beginning, to to cure the problem or to fix some problem with kind of model. You often propose in these new particles. Okay? So people have proposed different theories and different particles. So what you can do, you can take some particles, 
Okay, suppose some part, fix some problem of time world, and uh, then you have some new part. This could be prime or anything. Then what you can do since uh, LSE haven't seen it, this particle, so you can uh, you can match your Lagrangian of this uh, new part. So we start about here. Okay. So once you do this mapping or matching uh, of these new particles, this time what ESP. So the rest of thing is just uh, uh, that you have to do once and for all. So meaning uh, all the uh, running from lambda to lateral scale and lower scale, calculating the observables in terms of uh, uh, standard ESP, you have to do it once and for all. Okay. Let's say you have an expression for some details in terms of standard ESP. Okay, then many many models will uh, fit. You can calculate uh, that decay width for many many models. Only thing that you have to do is just match your match your model to standard model EFT. Just integrate this of uh, this particle and match your model. And the rest of the thing is you have to do it once and for all. So now you can see that you don't have to compute this decay width for every particle. You know there are many many decay widths and many many particles. Just compute, the, just perform the matching, at the, yes. at the matching of this particle with the star model. Okay, so this is the one way of using that. So meaning, if you have a model, you can study that model using SMS and the intermediate tool to study uh, to study various processes. Because you you would have already calculated the various processes in terms of SMS, then you don't have to do it for every model. So this was the practice, you know, done before that uh, we used to calculate uh, different processes for every model. You know, for suppose it be people spend their lives to calculate their processes, their processes, and then for some other model you have to do it again, again, and again. But here you don't have to repeat it. Yeah, you just uh, express your standard EFT coefficients in terms of your model. Only that step you have to do every time. So in this uh, in this course, you know all the loop effects, virtual effects of these particles are already commutated, automatically commutated. So normalization group running will automatically commutate uh, these effects. So let's say you in a given model you introduce some uh, coefficients, some parameters of SMEFT. Then this through the renormalization group running, all the loop effects of this model are automatically commuted. So this is very powerful, right? So you don't have to do this all the new effects for all models for all sections. Just the normalization group running of standard EFT will accommodate that parameter. So then there is a bottom-up approach. So in this approach, uh, what do you do? Let's say you are measuring some very soft variable and you see something, you see some departure of an observable from experiment. Okay. In that kind of situation, you can just uh, uh, Use standard EFT and try to see what kind of structure is required to explain uh, this, this kind of anomaly. So that will already give you some information about the Okay. So again, this you don't have to do model by model. So you can just use generic uh, standard EFT. So it will give you a very generic picture uh, and give you a, a direction here to where to respond. So these are the two approaches which I advocate to even use. Uh, as a property instead of so, there are many many papers you know, uh, maybe I also let you maybe you just give bounds on the coefficients in a parameter space of a system, which is I think mostly useless. You know. These bounds uh, are updating with time and also uh, uh, doesn't make much sense to me. So, these are the two ways I think. Uh, Sorry, I missed the point. Uh, you don't do that, but what do you do instead? So, these two things. Either I have a model. No, so you said you know putting bounds on this input you can be not useful if you say if I am not Yes. So what are you supposed to do? No, so so either you know, let's say you have some anomaly, okay? Right. Then you can uh, uh, perform a global fit or yeah, maybe you can finish and then okay, yeah. Finish finish. Finish. yeah. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, development in which took place in last few years, which involves uh, computing these complicated loops through diagrams, uh, which I will talk about in my tomorrow slide. Uh, so these play a very important role in the technology. So in future, we hope that 
uh, like uh, deconstructive theory, you know, uh, for standard model, uh, standard model DFT is a very similar, similar role uh, for, for looking for new things, like new kind of particles, etc. Okay, so I'm done. So this is just a brief summary. So we discussed that standard model is uh, quite successful, but still not complete. And uh, LSC did not find any, uh, any particles which we were expecting. And then EFT is a, is a very uh, good language uh, that we can use to study the physics. And uh, kind of the EFT is a particular player role to collect the high scale that uh, uh, lambda and electron scale were also connecting to the scale. And um, nowadays it's very effective, uh, very active area of uh, research. And uh, a lot of development took place in the last um, last uh, 10 years. Uh, so whether we will find a new particle tomorrow at the LSE or not, in both situations, this can, this can be used. And we saw this too. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs>